I'm currently working on a short film in Blender and I just want to share a bunch of useful information for creating your own cinematic images and animations. Keep in mind I am just one guy as you likely are too, so while I have spent 60 plus hours on this so far, things will be far from perfect. With that in mind, let's get into the juicy stuff. Now as you know, renders are captured from the perspective of your camera, so the camera setup is a very important first step. I'll show you my unique rig and how to set it up briefly yourself. Alright, so we've got our camera object over here, and we have got this parented to a empty, which is controlling where the camera is looking. And we are using a track to constraint to accomplish this, I'll show you how to do that in a second. And on top of that we've also got this secondary empty, which is parented to the first one, and this one is controlling where our depth of field is. You can see if I move this closer to the camera, everything gets blurry. And as you can see, if I move it far back, it'll bring the focus more to the tank in the background. But yeah, we basically get fine control over all three of those things, which is really nice. And I'll show you specifically how to set that up in just a few short steps. Open up a new project to make sure that you've got a camera object inside of your viewport. You're going to want to go and add an empty. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the camera and we are going to go to this constraints tab and we're going to add a track to constraint. Now we're going to use this little eyedropper and we're going to click on the empty. Now when we move our camera around it's always going to focus on the empty and similarly if we move around the empty the camera is also just going to follow wherever we move that empty to. This allows for much smoother camera control and we can do amazing orbital shots and all of that but in general it just makes lining up your angles a lot easier because you can just put your empty where you want the focal point to be and then you just move your camera around accordingly until you get something which looks nice. Now the only other step which I would recommend is adding a second empty object. I personally like to add a little cube, but you can add whatever object you like. A cube probably isn't necessarily the best one, but you're going to want to move this to roughly the center of the other empty object. And then with that selected, you're going to shift click on your first empty object, click Control P and parent to object. So that means you can move the secondary one around by itself but whenever you move the main one around, this one's going to follow. As we are going to go into the camera settings, make sure to enable depth of field, and we are going to select the second empty object as our depth of field controller. We can just keyframe this depth of field object to be wherever we want it to be. This setup is a combination of four or five tutorials I've seen over the years, and I've really enjoyed working with it in my most recent short film. Now, lighting and composition is the next thing which can make or break your scene. Good lighting can be fine-tuned, but usually boils down to only a couple or even one powerfully placed light per scene. Often, limiting yourself is good so that you don't end up with boring, flat lighting. Play with the color, radius, and strength parameters of your lights quite a lot, as well as the positions, and think about the effect which you specifically want. In my experience, a good first step is to set up your primary key light, and then set up a rim light behind your object of focus for some nice edge lighting. The key is just to make sure that you play around and try out a lot of different things. Now, composition is mainly about having a balanced frame, which brings the eyes of the audience where you want it. The rule of thirds is able to help us a lot with this. And for example, in this shot, instead of having the entire gunship in frame, involving some sky to balance out the frame is very important for the composition. And in this close-up scene, giving this guy some looking room instead of squishing his face against the side of the frame is also going to make it look much more natural. You can have some amazing looking stuff in your scenes, but at the end of the day, the presentation of those things is the key to success. Now, asset quality is a simple but often skipped over aspect due to performance reasons. These clone trooper models are 4K and with decent poly counts, which is why I'm able to get up so close with them still looking quite good. When determining how high quality something needs to be, just think about how close it needs to be to the camera and how in focus it's going to be. Decimate whatever objects you can, you can often get away with a lot, and also instance objects where possible like all of these mountains in the background. You can simply achieve this by using Alt-D instead of Shift-D which would duplicate the objects. Also, in a short film like this you can often Thanos snap objects completely out of existence. For instance, once these clone trooper actors are done being in frame, I can simply keyframe their scale to be zero and they just completely disappear out of existence and stop getting rendered. You'll just naturally learn over time and with experience the places where you can and can't cut corners as easily without affecting visual quality. Finally, rendering is quite important. In the Cycles render engine specifically, the render resolution matters quite a lot. I generally would recommend something like 1440p. For a much longer animation, 1080p might have to do. This isn't the same way that camera image quality matters. By rendering in a higher resolution, you're essentially just forcing there to be more pixels and more information. So things will just look much crispier and more refined in terms of detail. Now post rendering, compositing and color grading and correcting white balance are also quite important. You can see the pretty drastic difference that these can make. It's a pretty important step and often one of the greatest transformations that I see people missing out on. The step can't save a bad render, but it elevates a decent one to a much higher level. You can either achieve this in Blender natively with the compositing tab, or you can just download DaVinci Resolve for free. I personally combine both of them and use the best aspects of each. Lastly, if you need to get a lot of frames done quickly, or you've got a really intense scene, I'll link my optimization guides for both Cycles and Eevee right here. Now definitely one of the biggest factors is experience and skill. You will get much better at this sort of stuff with time, 
and just with trying out different things. So don't be afraid to play around and fail a little bit because it's all part of the process. Good luck and happy creating. It's been Yuzin. Goodbye. Woohoo!